This is outside News Corp headquarters, the parent company, of course, of Fox News Channel, the most important news network in the world. Uh, and we are, well, if you could agree with that, there you go. Uh, and just just hours hours away, uh, really, you think about it, uh, from the big day itself and where we stand. Uh, we're in a very busy shopping area in and of itself on 6th Avenue. They call the Avenue of the Americas in Midtown Manhattan. We're not too far from Radio City Music Hall. We've got a lot of stars and uh, pretty big folks uh, in and out joining the, us here throughout the course of the next 45 minutes or so. Uh, but, you know, we never keep that far from politics. Last week at this time, I was in Iowa for the big debate. <laughs> Now, the question is in that state whether a revolution could be of the making, and that fellow on the left you see is the guy who could be bringing it. Ron Paul, the front runner right now in the Iowa caucuses. He joins us right now from Texas. Congressman Paul, very good to have you. Thank you, Neil. Good to be with you. Uh, are you surprised that not only are you the front runner, you've actually been staying the front runner for a better part of a week, which is, at least in recent polling history, unusual, <laughs> um, that, that uh, with, with a week and a half or so to go, the pressure's on to maintain it. How do you feel about that? Yeah, you know, I guess I'm not, I'm supposed to say I'm not surprised, and I expect it all along. No, I'm a little bit surprised, but of course very pleased. I was always convinced that the message would be very popular and very necessary. I wasn't quite sure that I would be the messenger that could deliver it. So things are going very well, and the crowds are getting bigger, not smaller. The enthusiasm is growing, and I'm talking to more than just the young people, the college kids, the retired people coming on. So there's been a different shift here in the last month. Congressman, uh, you probably heard Terry Brandt said that Governor of Iowa, the Republican Governor of Iowa, said if you were to win the state, um, he's telling a lot of people, well, ignore that and focus on who came in second. What did you think of that? Well, I, I was surprised because he's been pretty generous in the past, and I don't know whether that uh, he, he didn't mean it to sound the way it did, but it did sound a little bit strange. Um, but if that was a literal translation and that's what he meant, uh, I, I think it diminishes the whole process of democracy and elections. What's the purpose of doing it? You know, uh, they say, well, he gets his supporters out. Well, that's what I'm supposed to do. Maybe I solicited and got and approached people who weren't the ordinary voters, you know, like uh, uh, the independents and maybe young people decide to come out or the people who have been disenchanted. So I would say to dismiss the election wouldn't be very good. But I don't think it's just the governor. I think there are others who have hinted that, that uh, this would be a monkey wrench into the electoral process. No, you're what right. It's mean? not just the, the established that? Republican go. I mean, there have been many that say some of my <laughs> yeah. colleagues at Fox, I made note of it, who say that your win would minimize and, and, and even trivialize Iowa in future elections. Um, how do you feel when you hear that kind of stuff? Well, you know what? First you think, well, this is terrible. But on the second thought, sometimes this sort of helps because it certainly helps the supporters and the people who might not have been paying much attention. You know, they might even become more energized. It certainly energizes me because, uh, you know, I might be, you know, at a steady pace doing the same thing over and over again and not getting a, a little any extra excitement. But then you get to the point and say, Boy, wouldn't that be neat if you could really beat them and have them eat a little crow? So I think this has energized the campaign and uh, the fundraising. The other day when some of the stuff was coming out, somebody called and said, you know what, our fundraising has just gone up again. Has so it really? They want so us to be the on more television. this comes out, the more the fundraising picks up? <laughs> Yeah, that's what's happened. So it's sort of ironic that uh, maybe we need a few more people criticizing what's going on and, and, and express the uh, disenchantment of my election. It'll be more fundraising and probably more TV and more votes for us. So, Congressman, when you do get to a front runner status as you have and are, uh, invariably they start digging more into the past. These newsletters your name was associated with in the mid-90s are, are, are seen as many to be racist. They say that you're a racist. How do you respond to that now? <laughs> well, I don't think anybody calls me racist. I think the charge, which could be a correct charge, is I was pretty negligent as a publisher of a newsletter not paying more, more attention. Because it is a bit ironic as a civil libertarian, uh, you know, I'm the one that really champions uh, civil liberties and regardless of uh, race, creed, or color. And, you know, even CNN that sort of stirred this pot did a poll the other day and they took all the candidates, all the Republican candidates, and I came out the best of all of them in appealing uh, to the, those uh, in, uh, who, uh, in the minorities. So I would say that uh, maybe 
what this will do is stir up the defense because, you know, I, I address the drug war and how the prison system isn't work. The judicial system is very unfair to minorities. Nobody else would dare touch that. So uh, in, in many ways, uh, what they're trying to portray me as is exactly opposite of what I am. But I don't think it will stick. I mean, they, they've been trying to do that for years. This is pretty much old hat because uh, that was, I mean, those letters were written maybe close to 20 years ago. There, so there were, I think the bigger point they, there, you're right. I think the bigger point is that they're, they're leaving aside the racist charge, which I, I, I think those who have looked at your record might, might, might think otherwise. But, but I, I think what they're trying to say, Congressman, and this is a rap that, that you've confronted, uh, that you're... You're, you're detached, you're, you're aloof, or that you're not paying attention to these details, and sometimes your name or your, your, your very person can be dragged into something that you're not, and that as president, this, is a, this could be a problem. What do you say to that? Well, I would say that maybe that's part of human nature, because I think Obama was charged with a few associations that he was not very proud of. So, no, I think that uh, if somebody thinks I'm perfect, then they're, they're going to be disappointed. Uh, but I think in management, I've, I've done a lot of management when it comes to my businesses, my medical profession, and, and my congressional offices. And we get pretty high marks. But to say that uh, I was never negligent, uh, you know, back in those days, I was practicing medicine. And uh, though I was involved with the letter, especially on the economic issues and wrote right. about the, uh, you know, the financial bubbles, which you and I have talked about so often, I did participate in that. But to really pay the close attention and and then you also have to see this in context. I was I've been publishing a letter a Freedom Report plus that investment letter for since 1976. And I would say percentage wise, this is probably one hundredth of one percent or even less of all the thousands and thousands of pages no, uh, right. and, and most people see those letters as being investment letters. They were hard money newsletters. And that's what uh, almost anybody that knew anything okay. about it said, oh, yeah, he had a newsletter. It was a hard money newsletter. Then let me switch gears a little bit. Donald Trump announcing he's an independent now. Um, many say greasing the skids for a potential independent run for president. What do you think of that? Well, to each his own. I don't know. Uh, I, I, I mean, he may do it. I doubt if he'll do it. Um, but uh, if he really wanted to be president, uh, why did he? Why did he walk away? Why did he become, uh, uh, you know, uh, concerned that he couldn't do it as a Republican? You know, so I have no idea what he's going to do, and uh, I don't think he'll be calling me for advice. I don't think he's going to come and ask for an appointment to come see me uh, to uh, get any advice or any endorsements. I'm not expecting that to happen. Why have you never kissed his ring like virtually all the other candidates had? Well, you know, I, I just didn't think it was necessary or appropriate. I mean, uh, how could he endorse what I'm doing? I mean, uh, my positions are pretty much opposite of what he talks about. I mean, he uh, he's not he doesn't believe in free markets. He likes the Federal Reserve. He, and he, he he's not All a right. free trader. He likes tariffs. I mean, so there's not much that we we have in common. All right. So we won't so, be seeing you uh, at the Trump Tower anytime soon, Ron Paul. Pardon me? We won't be seeing you at the Trump Tower anytime soon. Oh, no, not, okay. not likely. I mean, uh, right. if, he, if, he, uh, if he wants to converse, I'll be glad to take his call. Very good. Congressman Ball, thank you very, <laughs> very much. When we come back, we're going to 